Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. I'm Father Chris Willis, and I live over the road there, and I'm the chaplain to the Carmelite Sisters at Woodhall in Wakefield, in, uh, not Wake, in Weatherby. And uh, uh, I'm just helping out here this evening. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the sons of Israel this. You must not molest the stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan. If you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me, and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the usurer with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. 
I love you, Lord, my strength. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praised be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observe the sort of life we live. When we were with you, which was for your instruction, and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took the gospel, in spite of the great opposition all around you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Acacia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread. And not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you were converted to God and became stewards of the real living God, and how you are now waiting for Jesus, his Son, whom he raised from the dead, to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is coming. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. May the Lord be with our hearts and our lives. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question. Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, I give my homilies a little a title usually, and this one is called Love of God and Neighbour. Um, I wrote it last night um, for the sisters and whoever comes to Mass tomorrow. I didn't know I was going to say this one tonight. but uh, So it's a bit of a trial run. We'll see how it goes. Discipline, particularly self-discipline, is a great gift to have in any walk of life. We see it particularly in those of sportsmen and women. Normally they are young people, often in the public light, dealing with great talent, acclaim and enormous responsibility as role models to their peers. Not all of them can handle it well. It takes enormous inner strength at times not to retaliate. My friend Steve was a very good soccer player. In a recent phone conversation, he told me that he was coming to the point of admitting defeat. And now at the age of 62, I'd realised that he would have to give up playing. My response was, well, Steve, you've had a good run. I watched him play on the left wing one Saturday morning in Durham. He was a young man then, and the player marking him was simply hacking him down, and the referee seemed oblivious to the constant fouls being placed upon him. Steve winked at me 
from the sidelines and told me to watch the next foul carefully. It came moments later. Steve, at the last moment, turned sharply from going from the ball and ran from the field of play. His opponent, committed to the foul, ended up injuring himself. He actually broke his leg. Steve, the gentlest of men, had a word with the referee and told him the injury was entirely his fault. Perhaps at the day of Steve's entry into heaven, he will be greeted by either that football player or, indeed, the referee. As a young priest, I recall retaliating to an elderly man who, in my opinion, had deliberately set out to be condescending to me. He quoted my retaliatory words to all who would listen. Perhaps about two or three years later, I met him at a church gathering, he now being confined to a wheelchair. It took me a few moments to have a word with myself and to approach him. I asked for forgiveness, which he granted immediately, and we left one another in peace. How relieved I was that we had had that conversation, as the same man died a few days later. When I go to heaven, which I hope to do, it may well be this man, or indeed several others I have offended, who meet me at those venerable gates of entry into eternal life. If God is to be my rock where we take refuge, as the psalmist sings, then our lives must have that self-discipline, that inner strength to live very simply. We must love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and secondly, but no less importantly, we must love our neighbour as ourselves. What do you see in me? Asked a religious sister in, of St. Therese de Lisieux, whom Therese found to be difficult and challenging, but with whom she tried to respond in love. She said to that sister, that, that sister said to her, Therese, what do you see in me? And Trez answered, Jesus. It is relatively easy to be Christian to those who like and praise us, to play soccer with friends rather than opponents, to be good neighbours with those in our close circle of friends as opposed to those who are our neighbours, to come to an accommodation of those we will be charitable to in the community, and those with whom we would afford a wide berth. In the poem Abu Ben Adam, um, and if you've not read it, I, I really recommend it. I'm just going to quote the end of it tonight. But in that poem, Abu Ben Adam, the angel informed Abu that he was not on the list of those who loved God. I pray thee then, said Abu, write me down as one that loves his fellow men. And now I quote the poem. The angel wrote and vanished. The next night it came again with a great wakening light and showed the names whom love of God had blessed. And lo, then Adam's name led all the rest.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We pray tonight for the Church, for Pope Francis, Bishop Marcus, the priests of this parish, for all the people of God. We pray for us to shepherd each other tenderly. Lord, hear us. We pray for family life, those who live in families, those who live alone in this time of pandemic, and all the strains and difficulties that bestow on people. Those with young children, those expecting babies at this time, those who are struggling at work or are now unemployed. Lord, hear us. We pray for our government and the decisions that are very important that our political leaders are having to make at many, many levels. We pray for their wisdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick, the sick in our own hospital in Harrogate, and those who care for them, the sick in our own homes, and what we often forget, those who are mentally ill at this time. Lord, hear us. For our private intentions and prayer in the depth of our heart, we ask our Blessed Lady to lead those to her Divine Son this day. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, hear the prayers we make before you. 
and those of our inner heart. Help us find your inner peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divine life of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the deeper, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of, Christ, of, of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Marcus our Bishop, and all the clergy and faithful of the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ, for the Kingdom. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your Apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You will live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul should be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for his own life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs may one day, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Um, Canon Jim asked me if I would announce the following. Um, November dead list envelopes with appropriate insert are available in the porch and at the exit to the church. And if you wish to use them, please complete and return either in the offertory box at the exit of the church or through the presbytery letter box. Uh, he asks for this to be done before All Souls Day, which is the 2nd of November. the body of Christ. I'm going to give the blessing first, aren't I? Yes, sorry. The Lord be with you. May the blessing and peace and love of Almighty God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And thank you for coming. Thank you. The body of Christ.